Hey guys, this is Jared with Data Medics again, and today I'm going to take you through the data extractor part of the PC3000 software. Now, uh, just to be clear, data extractor software uh, is part of the PC3000 system. Uh, it is an actual add-on module. Uh, the price, I think it's somewhere around $2,500 or so for the UDMA edition to add on the data extractor module to the PC3000 system. And <clears throat> what the data extractor module is, is it's uh, both a logical recovery software suite as well as an imaging tool that works in harmony with PC3000. And if you're going to purchase PC3000 for use in data recovery, uh, it's certainly an add-on you're going to want to purchase. So what we're going to go ahead and do here, uh, we have a hard drive hooked up on channel zero, so we're going to go ahead and just fire that up, wait until that comes ready with these two lights coming on down here. I take a moment. This hard drive uh, has a little bit of damage. Now, the drive we're going to be working with today is actually a, a real case that we already recovered the data from. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and uh, use this as an example to uh, take a look at this and how it can work with a, a drive. So as you can see, it's taking a little bit of while to get ready. Um, hopefully it is going to work again. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, the drive is now ready to read and write data. Uh, this is a damaged hard drive. It's one that actually experienced a head crash. And so the read write heads were replaced to make this drive semi-functional again. And this is where we're going to use data extractor to now extract the data. So when you go ahead and press the button uh, up on the top, you see this button right here. That's the data extractor module. And that'll open this up. Now we have basically here a feature to open a task or create a new task. We're just going to go ahead and create a new task in this case. And since this is a job we've already completed, we're just going to call it test. And we'll delete it after the fact. So here we select our source drive, so in this case, channel zero. <clears throat> uh, you have some basic startup options. I'm going to turn off hardware reset because this drive takes a while to get ready when it resets. Uh, and then we'll just go ahead and hit next. So we're going to want to select make data copy. Now what this is, is if you're going to actually copy the data onto another hard drive, you're going to want to make sure that this here is checked and that will uh, give this option now to select a source a destination drive to copy the data onto uh, which in this case we have been using this Western Digital Drive uh, right here. It's always good to verify your serial numbers of your source and destination drives when you're working. Um, usually we keep our source drive connected to the PC3000 of course and our destination drive uh, we actually directly SATA connect or USB dock those. So in this case we're going to be using this one here serial number ending in 4905 and verify it to the actual disk, and we are good. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, so we've already done this once, so we're just going to hit yes, since we're replacing the test task. Okay, so now this is what you'll see when you first come up. You, you'll see you have your log, you have a map, uh, you could view different items in hex, and then a status tab. But we're going to go through each of these tabs as we start the imaging process. So <clears throat> to start off, I'm just going to go to the map tab, uh, and if you hit this go arrow here, that begins the imaging process. Now, as you may notice, this drive, it's going to image pretty well at first, but we are going to quickly begin hitting some problems on this drive. Uh, this drive had uh, quite a few areas of bad sectors. Uh, let's just see if we can get to one of those areas. Uh, I'm going to pause the video for a moment and tell that we start hitting bad sectors. Okay, so now you'll notice uh, we're starting to hit some bad sectors. Uh, you, know, you see these black ones here? That's a sector that was completely unable to read even after multiple retries. And as you can see now, the, the system has gotten very slow at reading. And so uh, one thing we want to do, I mean, at this rate here, if we go over to our status tab, we can see uh, we're only reading at 1.1 kilobytes a second. Uh, at this rate, it's going to take months to years for this to finish. So we're going to need to find ways to optimize this. Now, there's a lot of different settings in Data Extractor we can change to optimize the read performance. Uh, one that I like to change right off the bat uh, if we go to the loss of readiness here, uh, we can adjust uh, the timeouts. And th these are the most important two right here, the PIO and UDMA modes. If we shut these down to a much lower timeout, so for the first pass, we might only do uh, just a couple hundred milliseconds. And what that's going to do is it's going to tell the system that if it can't read a sector in just a couple hundred milliseconds, it's going to go ahead and just skip ahead and not bother to read that sector. So we're going to just go ahead and hit apply, and we should start to notice after the setting takes effect, it's going to start skipping through some of these areas a little bit faster. Uh, if it can't read a sector, it'll just go ahead and jump ahead. Uh, now, we're going to notice it's taking pretty large jumps here and then reading backwards. Uh, if we want to disable that, we can 
disable it right here, not provide specified reading after jumping. That will stop it from going back and rereading. Uh, we can also ad adjust some of the settings such as uh, the jump size. So 256 sectors. Uh, it looks like for the most part these are pretty small areas of bad sectors, only just one or two sectors each. So we'll set this something lower like uh, 10 sectors to jump each time it hits the read error. So <clears throat> as we can see, uh, we're now jumping through the damaged area a little bit faster. Uh, this is a severely damaged area, not likely we're going to get a lot of useful data in an area like this. Now with a lot of hard drives, what you're going to find is that uh, certain areas on certain read-write heads, there's just damage to the platters, and that's the case in this uh, job we're working on here. And, and so what we're going to want to do is be able to kind of skip around the bad areas. And one nice feature to do that is right here, the uh, ability to build a head map. Now I'm going to go ahead and stop this so we can work on that. Now, when it comes to building a head map, at first you'll see, if you try to do this, uh, it's going to tell you to run PC3000 utility. Now, so to build the head map, we have to have that utility running in the background. So what we'll do, we'll go ahead and open up the appropriate utility for this hard drive, which in this case, it's not able to auto-detect this family. Uh, we simply select the appropriate drive. You can see the drive is listed here. And we're just going to go ahead and find that drive. So we'll allow the utility to load. Once the utility is loaded, we can simply minimize that into the background, go back into our data extractor tab, the right one and then we select build head map and this time we'll see it go to work and it's actually going to build that head map now this can take a few minutes uh, it has to go through and analyze which sectors are read from which read write heads and then it builds an appropriate map where we can disable heads so as to get around some of those damaged areas so I'll go ahead and pause this video and allow that to finish okay so now we've finished building the head map and as you can see this hard drive has four read write heads labeled 0 through 3 and so now we're going to go back we simply hit the exit button here and now we've built the head map so we can go back over to our map tab and we can resume copying like we were and <clears throat> so since we, we see here at this point we're head 0 where we're reading you can simply hover over a sector it'll tell you which read write head those particular sectors are read and written through. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead, since we're really struggling here, we're just going to disable head 0 for most. We simply click that. As you notice, head 1 is reading much better. Um, just a few bad sectors, but very minimal. And as you notice, we're making good progress. So uh, head 2 and 3 as well appear to be making very good progress. So what you can do is kind of let this run for a little while with a particular head disabled, get past the area where it's struggling, and then periodically re-enable it see how it's reading, see if the reading has improved. Uh, as we can see, still hitting a lot of damage. Um, you know, in this particular drive, I think from the, about the 500 million to 700 million sector range, we had a, a lot of problems with this particular read-write head. So th there's definitely some lost data in that area, uh, but you know, again, we we're able to get the majority of the data from the drive uh, simply through imaging around these damaged areas. And uh, so that, that's the use of the uh, head map feature. Now just to go over some of the other parameters and features here. Uh, one thing that I like is task statistics. If we click that tab, it'll bring up uh, information about how many sectors are left to be read, how many have been read, uh, how many different types of errors or skipped sectors there were. So we can kind of get an idea of where we stand on the overall progress of the job. This is nice for being able to give uh, customers uh, update on what percentage of the data was recovered. We can simply do a little math here and figure out how much was recovered. Um, uh, we also <clears throat> can go into parameters, different useful features, uh, block size for reading, certain drives may read better at a larger or smaller block size. Uh, the default is 32, uh, if a drive is struggling, reading slow, sometimes lowering this to a number like 8 or even 1 uh, can actually make it read better. Um, <clears throat> also we can switch our direction of reading, so if I set this to back and then restart the task, uh, now it's going to actually image this hard drive in reverse. It's much slower reading in reverse, but certain hard drives, uh, we find that uh, unstable read-write heads may actually read much better in reverse than they do in forward. Uh, actually, in this particular case, that was how we read a lot of the data from head zero was actually in reverse. Uh, we found it to be much more stable than reading forward. So uh, that's uh, another feature we have. Um, also, we can adjust our, our read parameters. Uh, uh, what type of commands to send. 
Uh, the default is UDMA 66 on the newer version. Uh, we actually have even uh, newer UDMA than that, but I'm still using the old card in this tutorial. Uh, we can also use different ones. For example, if we use this use hardware retries, it'll actually force the drive into PIO mode rather than UDMA. Uh, certain hard drives, uh, for whatever reason, have service area damage, can't read in one of these modes. Uh, we, it's a little bit slower mode, but oftentimes uh, may make some drives more stable. Uh, we also have the uh, feature to read from the active PC3000 utility. Now, for many drives, this doesn't make a lot of difference. Um, Western Digital drives actually cannot read in this mode. Uh, Seagate drives can read in this mode, but it's very slow and not much better. Uh, but Hitachi and especially Toshiba actually oftentimes read much better through the utility. Uh, Toshiba drives, if we enable this, we can actually set up a virtual translator and get around issues such as G-list damage, which can make certain drives completely unreadable except for in this mode. So uh, certainly another great feature of PC3000. Uh, we can also set uh, different parameters for how to handle errors. Uh, we can set uh, jump size when a uh, sector is completely unreadable, decide if we want a software or hardware reset the drive, enable power resets if the drive becomes unresponsive. Uh, There's just a whole lot of different settings, and a lot of it is just trial and error. They spend time, uh, play around with a lot of these settings, find the setting that for this particular drive works the best and can image at the best rate of speed while maintaining stability. Uh, so that's uh, certain things. Once you're done imaging a drive, we can select this right here, work with copy only. Uh, that will disable the imaging from the original source drive and allow you to work with just a copy of the data when you go into the logical side of the recovery. Uh, now, as we look at the logical side of the recovery, now if we have this here, it shows a little file tree. This pulls up the actual logical recovery software. Now, one great thing about uh, Data Extractor is it's an imaging tool, but it's also file system aware. And I'm going to show you a couple of great features here. So as we can see, we have our partition tables. We can see there's different partitions on this particular drive. In this case, it's HFS formatted, so this is an Apple hard drive. Uh, if we go ahead and open this up, as you can see, we have our basic. Go ahead and let that scan for a moment. <clears throat> so we have our, you know, our root folders. Uh, one thing that we can do that's really useful, and this one actually has some file system damage, we need to finish imaging it yet. Uh, but being file system aware, we can actually image only the sectors that are used. So if we right click on this uh, partition here, the HFS file system volume, we can select this right here, used sectors map. And if we go ahead and select that, what it's going to do is it's actually going to analyze the bitmap on the hard drive of used sectors. And so we can actually target just the areas, sectors that have files saved in them. And we can now sort this list, whether, depending on whether we want to image in reverse or forward. And we can go ahead, change our settings, and we can image just based on where there are actual files. So in this case here, uh, now we're imaging a reverse. Change that forward again. <clears throat> so now, as you can see, we're, we're imaging again. Now, if we take a look at our status tab, now this is a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Uh, we switch over to our status tab. We can see there's only 362 gigabytes of data stored on that drive. And we can also see the speed at which we're imaging, uh, estimated time of completion based on the current read speed. And so this is useful, especially uh, in you know, a case like this, 500 gigabyte drive, it may be worthwhile just to image the whole drive. But uh, we have a lot of cases come in where it's maybe a three or four terabyte hard drive with only a few hundred gigabytes of data. So what we can do, especially if a drive is really struggling to read, is target just those areas where there's actual data stored and skip around the areas where there's nothing saved. And if we watch this carefully, we can see it, it will skip certain areas that there was no data stored. So it's a great feature and can really speed up the imaging process on large drives that aren't very full. So anyway, so that's some basic features of the Data Extractor module. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to post them down below, and I'll do my best to respond to them. Uh, also, you can visit our forum. It's uh, datamedics.com slash forum. You can click the link right there on your screen. Uh, if you have any other questions or comments, please feel free to post them below, or visit our homepage, datamedics.com, or even give us a phone call, 844-4MY-DATA. Thanks for watching, guys.